Okay, so we just heard the story, My Brother is Afraid of Just About Everything. And these are some words that you might encounter in the story, or you will encounter in the story. So we're going to go over the vocabulary first. The first word is underneath. Underneath. And in our story, if you remember, uh, the little brother hides underneath of his blankets. So underneath. And we have tremble and quiver. And those are things he both, they mean almost the same thing. His whole body shakes when he trembles in fear. Your whole body can quiver if you're shaking. But if we remember in the story, the little brother's bottom lip quivers when he's afraid. We have vacuum, buried, engineer, engineer. And there are a lot of different kinds of engineers. Remember in our story, our engineer is the person who drives a train. We also have beards, clenched, thunder, and storm. We're making our compound word thunderstorm. And boa constrictors, which are snakes that like to squeeze their animals before they eat them. All right, let's go over the words one more time. Underneath, tremble, quiver, vacuum, bury, Engineer, beards, clenched, thunder, storm, thunderstorm, and boa constrictors. I'm going to pause here. You can go ahead and pause the video too, and after you read the story, come back to it. Okay, I'm back. I thought we could stop and pause and keep recording, and it didn't work that way. So I'll be stringing some clips together. Right now, I want you to pull out your phonics page, page 153. It looks like this on the top. It has a picture of a boy dreaming about space. You can pause this while you get your paper out. And when you're ready, unpause it. And we'll read the poem together, the green poem at the top. First, we'll read it in our regular voices. Sandwiches, books, a snack. What things shall I pack? I'll blast off to Mars and zoom past the stars. Okay. And now we'll read it like turtles. Sandwiches, books, a snack. What things shall I pack? I'll blast off to Mars and zoom past the stars. And now like robots, ready? Sandwiches, books, a snack. What things shall I pack? I'll blast off to Mars and zoom past the stars. And now cheetahs. Sandwiches, books, a snack. What things shall I pack? I'll blast off to Mars and zoom past the stars. Okay. Today on our phonics paper, we're talking about plurals. And I know that you know if you have one tie, you don't have an S on the end. If you have two ties, you've added an S. We've talked about adding S. We've also talked about adding S to verbs. So remember, we said if a boy is going to run, if our noun does not have an S, our verb does have an S. So if we have one boy, he runs. And we talked about our nouns being plural. If we have more than one boy, if the noun has an S, our verb does not. So the boys run. Well, today, we're not just adding S to our nouns and our verbs. We're adding ES. And there are certain only certain rules that we have to follow to know about adding ES. So if our noun or our verb ends in X, Z, SS, SH or CH, that's when we add ES. 
So let's look at the word seal. Does seal end with X, Z, SS, SH, or CH? It doesn't, so we just add an S, just like you're used to doing. But if I have a word like brush, let's look up here. Does brush end with X, Z, SS, SH? Oh, it does end with SH. So instead of just writing an S, we're going to add an ES to the end. Okay. So let's look at your paper. We'll do numbers one and two together. Number one, read along with me. At the zoo, we saw some, and you can use the picture clues to help you. Should it be we saw some seal? or seals. You're going to circle the word seals and print it on the line. Okay, let's go on to number two. It says, we like to eat fresh, should it be peach or peaches? Circle the correct word and print it on the line. Make sure you use those picture clues to help you. If there was only one peach in the picture, then you would know that you would need to circle peach. So don't just think about the sentence, but think about the sentence and use your picture clues. Okay? Go ahead and fit, pause this, finish the front, and when after you finish the front, you can unpause it, and we'll keep going on the back. I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, on the back, the first thing I want you to do on the top of your paper, I want you to write X, Z, SS, SH, and CH. You can copy those from the board and write it on your paper. That will help you to remember when to write ES. And if I go too fast, just pause the video and then start again. Okay, we're gonna do Steve's list together, number one. So let's read the yellow box above Steve and see what we need to do. Read each shopping list. Finish each word by adding the ending S or ES. Print the ending on the line. So remember, we wrote up here our clues for when to write ES. So for number one, Steve's list, it says two book to read. Are we going to add S or ES? Let's see. Does book end with X, Z, SS, SH, or CH? No, it doesn't, so we just write S. Okay, let's go to the next one. His list says three paintbrushes. Let's look at the end of paintbrush. Does paintbrush end with an X, a Z, an SS, an SH? Oh, it does end with an SH. So we need to write ES. The next thing on Steve's list is six Red pencils, and I'm just going to write pencil here for the sake of time. Six pencils. Let's see, does pencil end with X? Does it end with Z? SS? SH? CH? No, it doesn't add, end with one of those, so we just add S. And the last one. 
is two jars of paint. Let's see. Does jar end with X? Does it end with Z? Does it end with SS? SH? CH? No, it doesn't end with any of those, so we're just going to add S. So we're going to go ahead and stop here. You can finish the back of your phonics paper, and when you're ready, start the video again and be ready to do your math. Okay, hi everyone, we're getting ready for math. You're going to be on lesson 10-1 at the bottom of your page. It says chapter 10, lesson 1, and page 465. It looks like it's hard to see on my book, but similar to that. In red letters at the top, it says add tens and dimes. And I know we haven't done a unit on money yet, but here's a dime. And one dime is the same as 10 pennies. So think of our cubes. A penny would be like one cube, and a dime would be a stick of 10. So one dime is 10 cents, or one 10. All right? And before we start, everybody get up. We're going to do our jumping jacks, counting by tens. Ready? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Stretch and shake out a little bit. So today we're talking about tens. And not so much about ones, a little bit. We're going to have zero ones today when we're talking. But we have one ten. That's the same as ten. Two tens, remember, is the same as twenty. Three tens is the same as thirty. So I'm going to skip one and see if you can figure out what it is before I write it. If I have six tens, that's the same as, I hope you got 60. Do one more. Eight tens. Eight tens is, I hope you got 80. Not one, not ten tens. Remember we talked about ten tens a while ago? If we have ten tens, remember we have one hundred. So if I put a zero here for one ten, I have ten. Do you notice the pattern? Two tens is twenty. Three tens is thirty. We're just putting our zero at the end in the ones place to mark it as a ten. Let's all look at number one. Number one says we have five dimes. Five dimes is the same as five tens. So five dimes is the same as 50 cents. We have five dimes plus three dimes. Remember three dimes is three tens. Three tens is the same as 30. We have 30 cents. Now, this is something we haven't talked about yet. Later on, we're going to add numbers in both columns. And we're always going to start with the ones. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. But when we're adding both columns, remember here we have our ones and here we have our tens. But if I know this is zero, I can say five plus three is eight. So that means 50 plus 30 is 80. Let's try number two. Now number two, they didn't use the word dimes. They used the word tens. Three tens is the same as, let's see, 10, 20, 30. 
3 tens is the same as 30, plus 6 tens is the same as 60. When we know 0 and 0 is 0, 3 plus 6 is, see if you can figure it out, 3 plus 6 is 9, so 30 plus 60 is 90. We'll do finish the front together. Number three, seven tens plus two tens. Seven tens is the same as 70. Two tens is the same as 20. Seven plus two is nine, so 70 plus 20 is 90. I want you to pause here for a minute. Try numbers four, five, and six on your own. And then after you do that, unpause it and we'll see if you got it correct. All right, number four, one dime plus seven dimes. Remember a dime is 10, so one dime is 10. Seven dimes is 70. One plus seven is eight. So 10 plus 70 is 80. And that's number four. Now number five is written horizontally. It says two tens plus six tens equals how many tens? Well, we know that 2 plus 6 is 8. So 2 tens plus 6 tens is 8 tens. 2 tens is the same as 20 plus 6 tens is the same as 60. And 8 tens, we know, is the same as 80. And this part is problem number five. Okay. And number six. Number six says eight tenths plus one ten equals how many tens? Well, 8 plus 1 is 9, so 8 tens plus 1 ten is 9 tens. 8 tens is the same as 80 plus 1 ten, which is 10. 80 plus 10 equals 90, because 9 tens is the same as 90. I'll give you a minute to look at that if you need to. And let's talk about the bottom of your page. It says, how is adding five tens and two tens like adding five dimes and two dimes? Well, if dimes are, is just another way of saying ten, it's the same thing. We're still adding tens. So you can put a check mark on number seven at the bottom of your page. I want you to finish the back on your own. You will do number 20 and you will do the orange box number 21. And it's okay to ask a grown-up if you need some help. If your grown-up is busy working from home, just get a yellow crayon. Color that problem so that later you can go back and ask your grown-up if you have a question. Good luck with it. Go ahead and pause this, and when you're ready, come back with your English paper. Okay, we're ready for our English lesson for today. Remember, before we had our, our two-week break, we were talking about contractions. And remember, contractions are a little bit like compound words. We're taking two words together to put them together to make one new word. 
But remember with contractions, we're leaving a letter out and putting an apostrophe in its place. So we're going to talk about today how to make a contraction from did not and does not. Remember when we write our contractions, with the exception of one word, which we haven't talked about yet, but when we write our contractions, we're going to start, we're going to write the whole first word. So with did not, I'm going to write did. Now, instead of writing not, I'm going to cross out the O and write an N, and in the O's place, the apostrophe and the T to make didn't. And for does not, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to write my first word, does. And then I'm going to cross out the O and not. Write my N and my apostrophe T for doesn't. On our phonics paper today, we're going to start on page 147. You should see this picture of a boy holding a kite. And on this page, we're going to work with the contraction didn't. And they did the example at the top. Remember, we don't trace those because they print differently than we did. But let's look at it. Instead of tracing over the words, we'll read it. An example for did not, we could say we did not go fishing. Or we didn't go fishing. Let's go down to our directions for letter B and read those with me. Underline the two words that make up each contraction. Write the contraction on the line. So let's read number one. Marty did not fly the kite. Which two words can we make a contraction out of? I hope you found did not. Underline did not. And then the contraction for did not is didn't. Marty didn't fly the kite. Okay, we'll do one more together. Number two, you did not sail the boat. Which two words can we make a contraction out of? I hope you found did not, underline did not, and write its contraction didn't on the line. And that will make the sentence, you didn't sail the boat. Go ahead and finish numbers three, four, five, and six on your own. Um, pause the video, and when you're finished, turn it back on for the instructions for the back. Okay, on the back, you should see the picture of the school bus right here. And on the back, we're focusing on the contraction doesn't. So letter A says trace over the words below. Remember, we're just reading them. Does not. Ryan does not play ball. And from does not, we can make the contraction doesn't. Ryan doesn't play ball. Okay. Let's read the instructions at letter B together. Underline the two words that make up each contraction. Write the contraction on the line. Number one, the lid does not come off the jar. Which two words can we underline to make a contraction? Does not. Go ahead and underline does not. And print the contraction for does not on the line. Print doesn't. And then we'll read that sentence. The lid doesn't come off the jar. And we'll do number two together. The last puzzle piece does not fit. Which two words can you make a contraction out of? Does not, underline does not, print doesn't on the line. And we'll read number two. 
the last puzzle piece doesn't fit. Go ahead and do numbers three, four, five, and six on your own. This is the last video lesson for the day. So you can finish the rest of your work independently and we'll have some more video lessons tomorrow. Have a good day.